Hi folks, Doyle Dykes here, and I guess I could call this my uh, Guitar Pour Series Lesson on Barry the Sailor. <laughs> Something I've been planning on doing for a long time, uh, and I really struck up a lot of interest recently when I said, you know, why I like to play fingerstyle guitar. And this is what got it all started, of course, uh, and it's nice to have you a cup, good cup of coffee. You can fix one now if you want to, just pause it, or a cup of tea. I always switch to tea in the fall, and this is the first day of fall in 2022. That's when I'm doing this. And so this uh, lesson that I learned from a guy named Barry Lackey, and he came to my church when I was, uh, I think I was about 12 years old. I was in the seventh grade. I'll never forget when he came and asked my father if he could play something on the guitar. And when he did, I mean, he started finger picking. And I have tried my best to learn how to play Chet Atkins songs and Merle Travis. And uh, I, I would do it with a flat pick. I didn't understand. We didn't have any finger pickers in our family at that time. Uh, but I, I ran to my mother. She was talking to someone in the back of the church. We always had sailors coming to our church. I, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. And whether they came for uh, God or girls, we didn't care as long as they came. And uh, I think this guy came for God and for guitars. Because <laughs> we have plenty of guitars in the, in the church. I was playing one. My dad had his 335 Gibson. He asked him if he could play something. And he started playing that finger style guitar. And, and my dad called it spider picking because of the way he's, you know... <laughs> And so I ran to my mother. I said, can we have him over for dinner? Which meant uh, actually lunch. You know, she still has breakfast, dinner, and supper at her house. And uh, sure enough, he taught me this simple little lesson that has stayed with me all of these years. I've shared this all over the world. Even in China, they asked if I would show how to play a song. I said, I'm going I'm to do something a little different. Not just a song, but this is how I learned to play fingerstyle guitar. And... Thousands of people have seen it in Japan, all over the world, and uh, and so I'm I'm very very happy to share it with you. I told Barry that, in fact, uh, it's in my book. I, I I have this book. It's called The Lights of Marfa. In fact, you can order it off of my uh, website, and it it actually uh, tells the the story of Barry and the sailor. I didn't even know it was here, but I have several things here. In fact, let me talk about that. If you want to support our channel and what we do. First of all, give us a good like and subscribe. Hit the bell, share it with somebody. That'd be a great thing. Please do that. That's a blessing to us. And uh, you can also go on our site or go to your store. Uh, you can contact your music store or go to Sweetwater or whatever and order some Doyle Dyke strings. These are DDS-325. And we also have them in, in nylon. We have a nylon set as well as steel. And then we have some guitar pour t-shirts. So if you're going to do a guitar pour lesson, uh, it'd be nice for you to have a guitar pour t-shirt. This is a t-shirt inside here. <laughs> so there's a song I wrote called Guitar Pour. So getting back to my, to my story, Barry taught me in just a little few little minutes short minutes, uh, something that stayed with me the rest of my life. I asked him, I said, where did you pick up this little pattern? He says, you know, I don't know. I don't know where it came from. He said, I, I suppose that day uh, I was the perfect teacher and you were the perfect student. I'll never forget him saying that to me. So let's get started. Have a little drink, a drink of my tea here. And my gun smoke <laughs> cup. And uh, pick up my old 55. It's a D28. You can do this on any guitar. You can do it on a nylon string guitar or, or an electric guitar. So it doesn't matter. And here's the way it sounds. Did that. <laughs> you can make up anything you want to, it's just a pattern, but here we go. So first of all, uh, when you're playing fingerstyle, 
I, uh, I have a thumb pick, and a lot of guys don't want to use a thumb pick. The reason I do is because you can do things like... And it amplifies, Mark Knopfler uh, calls it the smallest amplifier in the world. And so this is one of my uh, Kelly, Fred Kelly speed picks. And uh, just happened to be a green one. Uh, this is actually, that wasn't a speed pick. This is the speed pick here. And um, you can get these off of my site as well. And then they're in many, many music stores across America. And I'll just use this one. This is the most common one that I use. And uh, Fred Kelly speed pick. And I, and I use acrylic nails on these three fingers. You don't have to do that. But I've done it for years because I play hard when I play, especially on stage. And uh, so I just get these three nails overlaid. Uh, you can also, there are other ways to do that. You can glue a tip on it if, if you need to, or just drink a lot of gelatin, <laughs> uh, take vitamins. And all, you could go to James Taylor's site and he has a, something he does there as well. It's, it's very interesting. <laughs> And so when you're playing fingerstyle guitar, the, the, the thumb normally gets these three. And so, and then your index finger. Now I'm, I'm hitting the whole chord of C. I actually uh, caught both of these strings with that finger. You can do it like this with your little finger and like this here. But if you can, do it that way unless you want to alter, alternate like that. Now, when you're playing this type of uh, pattern, it, it's like it, it turns out being the Chet Atkins style bass, which is, which is a short form of this. Like if you're playing rhythm behind someone. Now, uh, what you're doing is just reducing it down to, to three strings. And what I typically do is mute the bass strings right here with the palm, this part of my hand, with the palm of your hand, like right here. Just with that, just, just bottom part of your palm there. And, uh, and so you're, you're reducing this to this, and which is very much like Luther Perkins used to with uh, Johnny Cash, and he would do a little double lick sometimes, but I hear the train coming, he's basically doing the bass part of, of the Chet Atkins thing, and you know, and he got that tick sound. It was just really great. And of course, with the uh, with the with the string bass, the upright bass, and also with the rhythm with Johnny Cash's rhythm, and then later with the drums, it just gave a sound nobody else had. And so what we're we, what we want to do is start off with a C. And this is a, uh, this first pattern is for anything that the tonic note, which is the note that if you're a C chord, C note is on the fifth string. That's your tonic string, your tonic note. If you're in A, the A note is your tonic note. If you're in the key of E, the E note is your tonic note, which would be on the sixth string. And so it changes the pattern over here. Now, uh, this is kind of crude. I was gonna redo it, but now I thought, oh, I think you can read it. So we're just having fun and a little, little informal here today. And so we'll start off. Uh, I'd like for you to remember to keep your index on your third string and then your middle finger second string and then your third finger on your first string, just like they fall, just like that. So thumb pick, like that. And first of all, I want you to, to uh, with your thumb and your index finger, I want you to pick the fifth and the third strings like this. Like this. And then I want you to pick the fourth and the second together. So you have two sets here, fifth and third, fourth and second. And then 
your third string, which is right in the middle of the fourth and second, and just pick that with your index finger, and then your bass string with your thumb, and then your first string with your third finger. So two sets, third string, and then one end of the other. So again, and this is on again on a C chord. So let me get a little closer to the camera. And then I want you to pick your fourth string with your thumb and then your third string with your finger your index and then your thumb so once again you know you, you just if you can just remember to keep your fingers in the proper place in other words uh, make sure you you hit the right uh, finger on the string now you can deviate from that the more you do this the more you play but for right now it it teaches you how to be more uniform right okay so it's like fifth and third fourth and second third string and then uh, the sixth and then the first so one end of the other and then fourth third fifth now fourth is right in the middle of the third and the fifth so thumb index thumb thumb index thumb two sets So now I want you to notice also there is a rest between the two sets up top, fifth and third, rest, and then. So if you're counting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then down to the bottom, uh, once again on your fifth string. So try that, fifth and third. Fourth and second, third by itself, one end of the other, six, one, and then four, third, fifth. And with a and then with a beat, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then back to the fifth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not muting my bass right now. I'm just uh, playing it open. So w the more you practice, it would sound like. If you were doing it faster. And you don't have to do it at all. You wouldn't do it on a, like, you don't mute your bass on the song like. sound like the which actually does actually sounds pretty cool riding down the city of New Orleans that's that pattern Monday morning rail so you can use it in a song but you have to uh, to uh, just memorize it first so two sets and then third string, one end to the other, and then fourth, third, fifth. I should have put my strap on here, folks, but here we go. Let's do it a little faster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now, when I repeat, you may have already noticed, I don't go back all the way back up to the fifth and third. When I repeat it, you're ending on the fifth string here. And, and by the way, this is T plus one is thumb plus your first finger. I don't, I don't do the, M, the PMI type thing, but T plus one, T plus two, and then your index again, then your thumb, third finger, thumb, first finger, thumb. So T plus one, T plus two, one T, three T, one T. 
And I mean, I have tablature on all this, but you don't necessarily need it. I don't think so. But uh, the fifth and third, and then the fourth and second. So there's a rest there. But when you repeat it, you don't go all the way to the top again. You continue where the asterisk is with the fourth and second. So it's like this. Fourth and second. Fourth and second. So you're ending on the one bass, but you're also beginning if you're repeating. So it kind of ends and, and uh, it begins again. So if you, if you didn't, it would sound like a broken record. do that try it with me fourth and second fourth and second faster and I want you to just look at my bass. Look at the thumb. That's what it's doing like that Chad Atkins thing. Luther Perkins. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it i mean that's all there is to that and uh and so uh if you're changing chords though there is one thing i want you to see where the star is on the four when you're changing chords uh you end there so here we are on the like we're going to do it twice through four and second end on the fourth change chords start at the top a minor and then you stop there again go back to the c start at the top and then go a7 you may do an a7 i like it like this too Also like it like this like if you were uh, running if you had an a7 here on your fifth fifth fret let's reduce it down to two and uh, when you're finger picking it sounds like this a minor C and, and this and that cool it just makes it cascade and then uh, take a C7, you know, a C, and then put your, put your little finger here on the, on the third. And then, and then alternate your bass or catch both of them like that. And leave your first string open. So, isn't that cool? And then, I also like to do a bar chord. And so uh, you just with chords, you know, you it, it almost sounds like you have a melody there, but uh, but like I said, you can play melodies. But the thing you have to understand is when you you change your tonic note on a chord, like from your your A string to your E string, which when you're in C, it's on your fifth string, and when you're in E, it's on your sixth string. And remember, you're reducing this down to, to that. Add this. It's the same thing, but your bass is six, four, five, four, six, four, five, four.
and you're it's basically the same thing except it's six and three and you use your thumb and first again and then four and second again third string again right in the middle and then instead of the sixth string it's your fifth string and then first and then four third six so you just flip the fifth and the sixth strings together so it's And so that keeps everything in order, you know. If you're going back to an A minor, then you would uh, actually go back to uh, where the, 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 the first column here, where the tonic is on your fifth string. So anything that's in the A family, like A minor, A7, or, or even if you're in the, in the key of C, and then you run that up to a D, like I said, that actually works the same way your tonic note is still on the fifth string. If you're doing the partial like this, it would be like if your A7 was down here, but you're just doing it. And then when I want to that, I go to this column again because your tonic is on the sixth string. And so that's really the way I learn. And for a year, everything has sounded like that. I am a pilgrim and a stranger. See, unless I'm singing, you don't know what the song is. But you can play it while you're singing. Traveling through this wearisome land, I've got a home. Yonder city, good Lord, and it's not, not made by hand. And again, you can throw, you know, bass lines in at that. And every time you change chords, you start up at the top again. That's, that's just the way it is. And, uh, and so once again, there's a rest between the first two sets break rest rest if you didn't do that it would sound like this <laughs> another broken record again and then if you if you repeat it more if you repeat it at all then you come back up you end down here come back up to the fourth and second not the fifth and third so it would like sound like this Fourth and second. Fourth and second. Okay. Again, you can do a little partial chord. <laughs> And so that's the Barry the Sailor lesson. I hope you got something out of this. And Barry also taught, taught me a couple of other things that day. And that's the way he taught me. And I'll show you that on another future lesson. But uh, for now, I hope you get this. I think it, it'll, uh, it can, it can absolutely, it changed my life. Who knows what it might do for you. God bless you folks. Have fun. Thanks.